Hola, and welcome to Motor Week. Why am I speaking Spanish? Well, we're bringing you the highlights of the Barcelona Motor Show. Now, of course, you can't come to the Barcelona Motor Show without talking about Seat. They may be owned by Volkswagen, but they are very much a Spanish company. Once associated with some rather dodgy cars that did have a tendency to rust, they've gone from strength to strength under the ownership of Volkswagen. Between 1998 and 2000, they completely relaunched their range, producing no less than six new models. Seat's design team certainly had a very busy couple of years. First up was a new version of the car with the largest boot in the world, the Toledo, in October 98. The following year came new versions of the Ibiza and the Cordoba. And then a completely new model, the Leon, was launched in September 99. The Alhambra was updated in May 2000, and the baby of the family, the Arossa, arrived late last year. It's becoming uh, a younger type of brand, it's becoming more exciting, more dynamic, more sporty, and yeah, it seems to be working. How important has been ownership by Volkswagen to this, this crossover, to this sort of transform transformation? I think with, with the Volkswagen came process, it came quality, and what's happened is that uh, Seid has grown up as a brand. I think where we differentiate ourselves is that we want to be the exciting brand, we want to be the dynamic brand, a little bit of Latin flair, and yeah, I think it, that, that's working as well. Looking to this, you mentioned Skoda, they're another part of the group that's had a real resurgence. Um, doesn't this mean now that you're both in a way fighting for competition from the same buyers? Well, I think with Skoda, Skoda's very practical, family orientated. I think with Seat, we want to be very good value for money, good specification, but then try to um, have this sporty awareness. And so we're bringing in vehicles like the, uh, the Leon Cupra, Cupra R, which uh, is being shown here today. Yeah, the Cupra R is definitely one of the stars of the show. And um, when will it be in the UK? Can you give us any ideas when we can expect it on the road? Well, we will see it in 2002. And so I can't really be more specific than that. So you've mentioned the sportiness. You've mentioned that you want to be seen as an exciting brand. Presumably your success on the World Rally stage is crucial to you for all this? Well I think we've, we've gone to the rallying and we will still continue with rallying with independence etc and I think with Seat Sport which is now a new organisation they'll be looking for other opportunities in motor racing one way shape or form so yes we'd, you know, we'd like to keep our sort of continuing um, uh, help within the, the rallying uh, circuit. Okay, and what about the future? We saw six new models in two years. Is there another six new models due that you're not telling us about? Uh, we've got some really exciting models coming out, new platforms, new engines, um, fantastic designing cues from the designers within SEAT. And I think that for uh, us in the UK, you know, we'll sell something like 25,000 units this year. We want to sell 40,000 units by 2005. Volkswagen may have helped to improve Seat's design and build quality, but it was their success on the World Rally stage with this car, the Ibiza, that really got them noticed. Seat were quick to capitalise on this, launching themselves as the car manufacturers for a younger, sportier buyer by launching a Cooper range. Cooper being their term for ultimate performance. Well, Gunnar Mackay has been checking out one of the latest additions to the range, the Leon Cooper. Now, a few years ago, the undisputed king of the hot hatch was the Golf GTI. And the idea of a hot Seat, <laughs> it was really quite amusing. The nearest they got to sporty was the Ibiza with Porsche technology, if you could call it that. And their reputation for being performance cars was, well, it wasn't very good. But not anymore, because ever since VW have taken over, Seat have completely reinvented themselves. And they're now making cars that are making people sit up and take notice latest of which is the Leon Cupra, and this is set to make waves in the calm waters of the established motoring world, not least with the Golf GTI. It would be quite easy to look at the car and dismiss it for just another small hatch. For starters, hot hatches don't have five doors, do they? And looking round the car, the only real clue that it's a hot hatch is the Cupra badging and the discreet side skirts. Well, that is of course if it's not yellow. But get this car out on the open road and you'll soon realise that this is no ordinary hatchback.
Now, if you're wondering where the name Cupra came from, it's a combination of the words cup and racing, the latter of which is definitely echoed in the Leon. The 1.8 turbocharged engine pumps out 180 brake horsepower, and the performance is, well, it's quite breathtaking. You'll go from 0 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds, and with a top speed of 142 miles an hour, it's a match for most cars. Now, the figures only tell half the story, because the flexibility of the car is even more impressive. There's enough pull, thanks to the turbo in any of the gears, to pull yourself out of any tricky situation you might find yourself in. Yeah! Now, inside as well as out, there aren't many clues that this is a hot hatch. Saying that, the quality of the switch gear is really first-rate and it's easy to see the VW's Germanic influence. The specification list is pretty impressive too. We've got electric windows, central lock-in, we've got airbags all round, CD player and climate control, and all that for under £15,000. Not bad, is it? Now the handling isn't the sharpest or most responsive, especially if you're comparing it to the likes of the Peugeot 306 GTI. But having said that, get it into a bend and the sticky front end and the traction control will make sure that you don't get yourself into any tricky situation. all day is why part with more cash for the Golf GTI when the Leon has got so much to offer. I mean, yeah, maybe the Leon hasn't got the same prestige as the GTI, nor has it got the same build quality. But think of all the money you'd be saving. I mean, where I come from, money talks. And £2,000, that's going to do a heck of a lot of talking. Well, the Leon Cupra may well be impressive, but this is one car that I would just love to get my hands on. It's Seat's Cordoba-based World Rally car, and it's absolutely fantastic. Just look at it inside. It's stripped down, it's basic, it's lightweight, and it's completely packed with performance. What a wicked car that would be to drive. Now, this, of course, is the kind of thing that we all dream about. We love sporting cars, but unfortunately, there comes a time in everybody's life when we need to be sensible. Families arrive, and we need to trade our cars in for something a little different. And when that dreaded day comes, you may well be in the market for one of these, the good old MPV. And this is Seat's latest offering, the new Alhambra. Now the first thing you notice when you get inside this car is really the quality. It feels and looks so luxurious, it's amazing. You really could be in a Volkswagen or you could be in an Audi. And it just goes to show how much cross-sharing there is across the Volkswagen group these days. When you take a look, the instrument panel, it could be straight out of Volkswagen, it's Golf or it's Passat or it's Bora. And look at the dash here, the dials. How much do they remind you of the Audi TT? Okay, you may not be driving a sporty car anymore, you can still pretend you are. Other than that, everything's dampened, everything just feels like it's going to last. And of course, you've got plenty of room. The Alhambra seats seven people comfortably. And if you want extra luggage space, then you can just take some of the seats out. And it's also packed with the kind of ingenious touches that you expect to find on a family car. There's plenty of good storage. There are tables to keep the kids amused on the long journey so they can draw on them. There are lots and lots of cup holders. Some of the cleverest child seats you've ever seen. And with it being a family car, safety really is an issue. Every seat has a three-point belt. Out on the road, the Alhambra's V6 feels very smooth, 
and you're certainly confident that it's got enough pull to cope with the extra weight that you get from carrying around a large family and all the kit that goes with it. You do need to work the engine though to get the most out of it. Once you do, it packs quite a punch, particularly when you get it over 3,000 revs. And okay, you may not want to go racing around town in a car like this, but it's good to know that you've got the confidence and the power there when you need it, particularly if you're overtaking with a load of kids in the car. And of course, what it also means is that once you drop those kids off at school, you can go off and you can have a bit of a play in it. On a practical note, the visibility is excellent as you'd expect and it's got a very nice turning circle which makes it fairly easy to park. Okay, it does feel a bit like you're driving a bus, but that's what MTVs basically are at the end of the day. The steering generally is very good, it's responsive and it actually holds the road well. There's not much of the kind of rock and roll that you expect in a car like this when it corners. The only gripe that I have is the gearbox, which does feel a little bit notchy. But basically, this is a car that does exactly what it says it's going to do. You've got good visibility, you've got plenty of space, and you can carry the family around comfortably, easily, and fairly cheaply. I didn't think driving an MPV could be quite so much fun, but that V6 engine certainly does the trick. Although for me it was missing one vital ingredient. I don't have the family yet to put into it. So for somebody that doesn't have to worry about carrying passengers, this would suit me down to the ground. It's a concept from Ford that's based on the car platform, and it's called the streetcar. Well, that's it for our first look at the Barcelona Motor Show. Make sure you join us in part two when we've got an exclusive interview with Seat's new chief designer. And guess what? He's a Brit. Join us in part two. Well, the Motor Show is packed with beautiful, desirable cars like this limited edition Audi TT. But what happens if you lust after a performance model like a Boxster or a TT, but you've only got a budget of under 20 grand to play with? Well, let me show you how you can get your hands on a bargain. Okay, it may not look much like an Audi TT, but you're probably going to get better performance for well under 20 grand because this is the Seat Leon Cupra 4. Now, as the name suggests, it's got four-wheel drive and its six-cylinder engine produces 204 brake horsepower. It is an absolutely cracking car to drive, but I'm afraid that there's one drawback. You're going to have to cross the continent to Spain to buy it because it's not on sale in the UK. Well, this may look spooky like the car you've just seen, but it is in fact the start of this year's Barcelona Motor Show. It's the Seat Leon Cupra R. Produced at their sports facility, this is Seat's fastest production car ever. It's made alongside the rally cars and it shed 140 kilos to make it even faster. Performance has been boosted by a 1.8 20 valve turbo engine that produces 210 brake horsepower and has a top speed of 140 miles an hour. And the good news is that yes, it will go on sale in the UK. The focus really is on delivering the kind of feeling that you'd expect as a competition driver. The chassis has been worked on at the sports facility, making it 10% stiffer. There are massive Brembo brakes and huge intake vents on the front bumper allow air to flow into the engine, making it easier for the twin intercoolers to breathe. As you'd expect, the styling is far more aggressive than on your run-of-the-mill Leon. There's a newly designed angular rear bumper, a small chin spoiler at the front, mesh radiator grills and the Cooper R's distinctive oval exhaust pipe. And they've done a fantastic job inside as well. It feels really sporty in here. It's jet black from head to foot and just broken up by the white instrument dials that glow in the night. The sporty feeling is finished off with these fantastic Recaro seats and some wonderful steel pedals and a footrest. This car should really give the Ford Racing Focus and the Honda Civic type heart a run for its money when it goes on sale next year in the UK. 
Well, we've been looking at some of SEAT's latest models in this programme, and with me now is the man responsible for the future of SEAT's design, and it's an Englishman, Steve Lewis. Steve, congratulations, first of all, on your recent appointment. Thank you very much. It's very good news. Let's talk about one of the models that you've got here today. You've got the, uh, the Cooper R. Tell us about that. It's very exciting. Uh, well, this gives you a hint of uh, the direction we're going in with, with our products. Uh, much more sporty, more dynamic. And that's really just the start of things. I mean, after that, there's going to be really things to come. Uh, I can't say too much at the moment, but, but in the near future, you'll, you'll see something very soon. Perhaps the next major show, which I think is Frankfurt, we're going to have something there to surprise the public. I think. Between 98 and 2000, say, you know, they revamped the whole model range. You know, the design department was incredibly busy. Yes. And you now have a, a very strong family look. Was that important to you? We created the family look very early on. It, it, it started with the Toledo model, and, and that was a project I worked on particularly a lot. And then it followed on with the Leon, which, which it, it uh, influenced the whole range of cars. And this is something we're going to develop for the, the future. The face of the car is a very strong selling point uh, to differentiate it from other companies, for example. You're producing the performance range now. It's a very complicated range. We've got the Cupras, we've got the Cooper Sport, we've got the R's. Yes. Don't the buyers of cars like that want to be able to differentiate their 210 brake horsepower car from the model that's got 180? Don't they want to stand out? Sure. I mean, as I said, we've started with this car now, and, and the, I think the, the Cooper range of cars was the start of the whole thing, and we're trying to push the sporty image. and. In the future, there will be a, a more of a clear difference between the models, so that the customers buying the, the 300 horsepower, whatever, will be able to stand out from the crowd, as it were. What's the 300 horsepower one? That uh, sounds interesting. Tell us more about that. <laughs> no, I can't say anything about that. Why do you feel that you sit within the Volkswagen Group? Are you, are you aiming to be very much the sporty brand? I mean, we always compared with Alfa Romeo, and, and of course our design boss, Walter De Silva, came from Alfa Romeo. We are trying to push the sportiness of our brand compared to the others within the group and, and it's a criticism often uh, in the press that the cars do are very similar in, in the way they perform the chassis etc and we're trying to differentiate ourselves in that direction not only the styling but also in the, the, the mechanics of the cars. What do you want to bring into it in the future, You know, what would you like your, your role to be? I mean, every designer's ambition is to produce a sports car for a company. It's, uh, it has a lot to do with marketing, whether marketing thinks there's a market for a sports car, but the trend at the moment really is for a lot of two-seater sports cars on the market, or coupes, for example. And I'm hoping in the future that we can push Seat in that direction. When will we see the concept then? Because I'm sure you've been working on it. Yeah, we're always working on concepts. Uh, I can't say exactly when, but uh, as I said, near future you'll see something. As you can see, Audi's V12 A8 has been getting plenty of attention from the executive type here at the Barcelona show. So we sent our very own young executive, Mr Richard Hammond, to Germany to take a test drive. Not so very many years ago, something like this would have been enough to set company car driver man drooling down his polyester tie. I mean, it's got everything you could possibly need for middle management, middle lane credibility. Prestige badge at the front, Audi, very respectable. Alloy wheels, flash. And most importantly of all, a seriously big number on the tailgate. 4.2 litres. It's a V8, no less. 300 brake horsepower. Thank you very much, Mr. Fleet Car Manager. Have a round of golf on me. That was all that mattered. To heck with how the thing handled or drove or what it had on board or how safe it was. What I need is a big number on the back, ideally followed by the letter I. Good on it. I have things have changed, mostly thanks to company car taxation, because with the new changing of the rulings, having a large engine car will mean you could probably pay three times more for your car every year than you do for your house, and you don't even own it. So I'm sorry my luxurious V8 engine chum, you've got to go, what I need is something a little less powerful. 
something that Audi must have had in mind when they fitted their newly revised A6 with a range of nine different engines, which means there should be one to suit the corporate pocket and even the most lowly of lower management. But it's not just under the bonnet that they've made changes. Just because it's a company car doesn't mean it doesn't have to look pretty. This repeat of the grille above and below the bumper was previously reserved only for the super sporty S6, but it's now available on all A6. And it does make it look a bit more aggressive and sporty. There are no major changes along the side, apart from revisions to the protective strip and thicker glass in the side windows. You can't see it, but it does keep the wind noise down when you're inside. At the back, we get new tail lamps, and more importantly, the division between the painted and the unpainted part of the bumper has been dropped by a mere five centimetres. It may not sound like much, but it does change the look of it quite a lot. In fact, there are really very few cars that can offer the Audi A6's combination of good looks, practicality, longevity and sheer style. That engine range covers just about everything. There's a fairly bulk standard 2-litre petrol with 130 brake. You'll get 150 brake from the rather busier 1.8-litre turbo engine. Fancy upping the stakes even further, there's a 3-litre V6. You can go completely balmy, of course, and have the 4.2-litre V8. Diesel engines are covered fairly thoroughly, including the 2.5-litre TDI that I've chosen today. As a drive, the CVT system allows the car to take advantage of the turbo diesel's torque characteristics, so you get a very torquey, easy, chuggy drive. You don't really need revs, you don't need to think about it, just press and go. is still a very competent car. So we say adios to Barcelona and look forward to next week's Motor Week when we'll be testing the Lexus IS200.